We have this RSS feed that is out in the open, right? So you can go to none of them, uh, sketch.xml and you can get the images for all of the sketches that I have here as a data set in different resolutions, right? We're writing an image fetcher that is allowing us already to download the images at the desired resolution. So I'm going to write a TypeScript script to, to download them. We're going to use this RSS parser. I have an RSS feed here, none of them, uh, slash sketch. And this lists a lot of metadata the sketches but what we care the most about is this url here that gives us squared version of our image so we can see for example the latest image squared is like this and we could put here a different resolution and we'll get that image in that resolution if we wanted it if we have a neural network that is getting 256 by 256 inputs we could even do that directly on the url before we even download the image so we're gonna go to our desktop and we're gonna create a new folder. So this is RSS parser, and we can see here that they have TypeScript support. As I was saying, so I'm gonna put this here and open my terminal. The first thing we're gonna go to the desktop, we're gonna make a new folder. So this is gonna be for Live35, and inside of that folder, we'll make another folder that is gonna be titled Sketch Downloader. Yeah, so Sketch Downloader, we do npm yes, Oh, let's actually do init. So this initializes a NPM project. So that's the node package manager. We've seen that in, in other videos. So we can say, okay, the package name is going to be sketch downloader version one description downloads sketches from sketch nono.map entry point index.js. So let's say this is download.ts test command. We don't have, we don't have repo. We can put here name and then license. We can just do MIT. Okay. This is good. Yes. And then we see we've created this package.json file that is here. So this is the definition of our custom NPM package that we're creating locally. We could do TS node download.ts to load that later. All right. So there is no file that is called download.ts. So we're going to create that and we're going to open this on TypeScript just to try this out. We're going to log this works and we'll run this on this console. So here we'll do TS node download.ts. All right. So we have this thing here working. So what we need to do now, if you go to package.json file, we don't really have any dependencies, so we can do npm install save RSS. All right. So we have this RSS parser, which we're going to install. And this just resolves that adds five packages. If we list not models folder, we see we added these five folders. This is RSS parser and these are its dependencies. So now we can go back to our file in and we can see here our dependency so now we could use that code that we were seeing below in typescript so import parser from rss parser so we import parser from rss parser right so type cost feed equals foo string so yeah this is to define your custom item and feed so to have typings on our own items i don't know if we're going to do this but maybe so our parser is going to be a parser uh, custom feed custom item new new parser and then we define here custom fields feed full bass and this is boilerplate code so we'll error because bass is not a key of custom feed and then item so we'll do here we're going to run an async function which is going to be async feed await parser parse url then here we'll put our URL, which is going to be HTTPS, none of them just get XML. And that's our feed. So we'll log our feeds title. And then we'll do for each item, we'll log the item title. Let's do it on modern JavaScript here. Item link. All right. This shouldn't work right now. We're going to try to run it. All right. So this is not going to work. So we know it's going to fail, but let's see. So we go here. Yes, no download. I don't really know why this doesn't work i think because we're not bundling properly we need to create the ts config file let's see if that makes it any better all right so we actually get the name and the url of each of the posts which is pretty good already and i guess now we could define our custom feed property so i'm gonna log the we're going to just log two or something so we don't get too many all right let's try again so here we have three of them right now 
So the title is here and then we have one and two. That is what we're getting. And now we want to log the, the feed. So we'll log the entire item just to see what we get. Okay. Update, content encoded, enclosure, URL, code snippet. Okay. As you can see, we don't get the media square. We get this enclosure, which is here. And that's something maybe we can specify through here. So the custom item. So this would be media content string. I'm not sure how to specify this one. So media content type string is necessary to type custom field custom item media content. So just take a look because media content doesn't exist at the moment. So what we're trying to do is to get it as a custom property and that doesn't seem like it's working, right? Oh yeah. Media content. Awesome. So let's copy this to a separate file just to make sure we know what's in here. So we get media content, but nothing else. All right. So now if we specify here another one, so media, the one we want actually is media square which is also a string and we'll put that here. Awesome. Okay. So now we should be able to get the media square. All right. And we get all the properties. So we get this and we get the, the actual URL. Now we're going to just try to print that one. So we'll print here the item media square object. All right. So yeah, I guess we got to get the actual URL. All right. So let's do one thing. So let's do, so we're logging that one. So those are two objects and we just want to log the object. We don't want to log it as a string. What we're trying to do right now is get those objects that we have here. So this would be any, let's say, and that way this won't complain. We can actually deconstruct properly to whatever this is and we wouldn't have to do this, but anyhow, right now it doesn't matter that we don't use the typings properly. So we're getting this URLs properly now. So this is all working. And what we have to do next is to download those, right? So we have these URLs here and we could say our media square URL is going to be this, but we could go here and we can replace the size because we know it's 248. We could put here, for instance, 512 if we want it. So we split and join and that should work. Awesome. So now is the actual image that we want, right? Whatever size we choose. And this will work anytime because when the feed updates, we'll get the URLs for the new images that have been added later. Now we have the URLs and we need to download the files. And we have a video on, on the YouTube channel. So if you go to videos and look for async queue, we have this video here on how to download files with TypeScript, Node.js and the async queue. This is a like 23 minute tutorial in which we see how to download dozens or thousands of files from any website or server in a queue. So this means that we can choose how many files are being downloaded asynchronously. So if you just tell your computer to download, let's say 5,000 images, it will try to download all of them at the same time. It will fail because it doesn't have the bandwidth to do that and the resources. If we have like a queue system, right? Like the computer program will ensure that every single time it's not downloading maybe let's say five or 10 images at a time. And when it's downloading 10, it finishes one and then it adds another one to the queue, gets another one from the queue. And then it's again downloading 10 and so on and so forth until you run out of images to, to download. So I think we can get code from here. We might have installed a few things. Okay, so I'm going to copy this code. We have the async library. We have the HTTPS library, fetch the file system, not fetch. We have an output directory here. We have the fetch function, which basically reads a, a URL and then we do something with it. At the end of the day, what we have is that we push files to download to a queue. So we have this queue here and uh, this is a callback. We define the async queue. The task is to download an image and then we have a callback and the callback that we're submitting here is push a callback and we pass a callback. So let's get this code into our file. I will post, I will open source everything that I'm doing today. So we're going to copy this code here and move it around. New code, callback, response, any type. All right. So typing is complaining. I guess we can also do function, right? So we have a sync and we're going to look at the dependencies of the project itself that we were using. So 
here for typings, JSON, and let's see a package what we have. So we have TSNode, we have types for async, and we have node fetch, HTTPS, F and async. Let's install things as we need them, otherwise we might be installing things that we don't need. So the first thing I'm gonna install is async. So I'm gonna install, install. So you save the async library and then you install just for development the types for async, right? So this is how you normally do it. And then we go back to our code, see what this complains about. Everything else seems to be okay for now. Here we're pushing to the queue, drain async queue. So here we define a queue and, and this number six, this defines the concurrency. So this is the amount of images we want to be downloaded at the same time. Drain, all images have downloaded, error, task experience, an error. And we have the image task, which for the task, we just pass a URL. So this is what we're doing above here. So you see the task is just passing a URL and images for each. And we'll do this for our code above for the feed items. All right, so we put this here. So the custom feed, we don't really have any custom feed parameters. We run this asynchronously. We're gonna define our output folder, which I'm gonna create right now. So we'll just make that directory that doesn't exist. That will create it, be created there. And now we just need to add images to our queue. So here we're just getting the URLs from an HTTP response. And the only thing we need to do is this, right? So push the URL, which we have here, and we can format it in many different ways, but we're just gonna do it in this way. And right now we just download two images, maybe put this parameter at the top. We don't really need the node fetch library because we're gonna fetch anything. And we don't really need this part. And this could be defined somewhere else really. So here maybe on the task, we could put a name as well. So maybe file name and we pass it here. We'll do file name is gonna be item title to lower case and we'll split the spaces and then join with a dash. All right, and we'll log that file name here. Let's try to see that first before we do anything with the queue. So this is how to prevent your diving mask from fogging up. All right, I don't know if there are gonna be other weird characters that we don't really know of, but we'll just do a few sanitization commands here. So we're gonna do this character and this character at least. We're gonna replace. I guess at the end, we can also do this. We can replace two dashes with one. All right, we're gonna download everything as a JPEG. So at the end of the name, we'll just put like a JPEG string, like the last part there, energy and time. I don't know if this is gonna be reversed. We have the index and one thing that we could do, so we can pad this in index. So let's see, TypeScript, pad start i don't know if this is what we're looking for string product pad start yeah right so maybe with that cool so pad start we just want to start let's see if we do i pad start three with zeros all right number so we're gonna just do this and we'll start that all right so now we have numbers that go from zero zero one so zero 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 and we're gonna add plus one so we start on number one let's do a few more and actually this is just a slug the file name we could do file name equals padded index which is here so we'll do index and then the slug and then the extension which is the jpeg okay we have the file name so the file name is it's here health or convenience okay what is that one so health or convenience that is a question mark and i thought we've added that one not sure why that one's not being replaced oh it actually is it's just that i need to remove it not replace it great so we now have the necessary code to download these images so now we can do here q push so this would be add images to the q url file name and we have here so because we're defining the image task right so this contains file name and url and the download file from url callback we're gonna put here the the file name parameter or, or maybe we can put here the the task as well so maybe we can just pass the task to here task image task and here we have task url we don't really need this downloading task.filename task.filename task url 
and we have the files. So we're going to be running this and hopefully images should appear in here. So we do maybe concurrency of one and we try to download 10 images. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, cool. All right, so this is good. Great news, 10 images here, and this seems like it works. So we're gonna keep trying now and see if we can download everything. We're hard coding this one, but we could put another hyperparameter here that is gonna be image size. And what we're gonna do, for example, now 10 for 24, and we'll put here the image size hyperparameter. And this is because it's a uh, 2NT48 is the default on my website. Yeah, what else can we do here? So let's try to see if by removing the limit, let's say we're reading all of the images and then we're adding them to the queue. We don't really need to log these things here. So we can log here, let's say reading, feed title, feed and downloading, right? So we're reading the feed and then we're downloading feed.items.length images, right? So that, that's what we're doing and we're gonna not download anything. So we're just gonna see that in here. So it's reading and now it's saying reading, sketch on my feed, downloading 104 images. That's actually the amount of posts that I have lined. So if we run this, we're gonna add those to the download queue. And uh, right now we're gonna put a really small size, 128, so it downloads pretty fast. I'm gonna run that. At the same time, I'm going to make this one smaller. So you see the images there, All right? Yeah, as you can see, we've added this nicey, which is having the, the index of each of the images from start to, to finish. And it's low, even though the images are not too big. And this might be also because I'm asking for images at 128 and EMGIX, which is a service that I'm using in here to, to do this magic, doesn't cache all of the sizes. It converts the image to that size and then it caches it. So we can see that if we were to run this again with the same concurrency, which this is one actually, so it doesn't download more than one at a time, we're going to see that this is indeed a, a lot faster, right? So this is downloading one at a time, but it's really fast. So we're going to download the images, delete them and download again. This is really fast. And that's because now the images are cached, they exist at that size. And we can see that, that they get downloaded really fast. We're going to do add a concurrency of three at a time. You'll see that now instead of one by one, the items are going to appear in like strikes, like one, two, three, or one, two, three. And you're gonna see that now, Yeah. Right? Now you see the incrementally download faster. And if we put, let's say this is really light downloads, so we can put 10 at a time. This is gonna download super fast. It's just going to, boom, downloads. We have them here. These images are really small though. And same thing, if we now request them at a different resolutions, we can even download that at 48 by 48 pixels, I think, or 28 by 28 pixels. So let's do that first. So let's actually make, a directory on the desktop and say sketches 28 pixel and sketches pixel and we're going to to do that we're gonna download them and those would be in here so they're downloading pretty fast there's really small images and you can almost not see them but actually this information we can use with a stacked out encoder to group them by similarity even if later we use to display the the actual resolution images this makes the neural network a lot lighter so we can use these really small images to generate the, the image coding and you can see that to human eye if you look at this it's really blurry it seems like we've pixelated the images on purpose all right and what we'll do right now we're gonna use the pipeline for what we made it to download the images and let's say we can download the highest resolution so this is gonna be the highest 2500 because that's the size I used to upload, even though the scans are usually bigger. So we're gonna run this and this will be the, the final test. You're gonna see here the images appearing and this is gonna take a bit more time than before, so they have to be downloaded. But yeah, in short, this Q code works. It downloads the images in the size that we request and all of the images contain the proper data because we're not trying to download everything at the same time. We're waiting for one image to download to start with the other one. And now we have all the sketches from one to 104. And this is really nice because now I have a tool to download and we could really easily adapt this downloader to download other data sets from other RSS feeds and create other data sets. I hope that was useful. Feel free to like the video if you enjoyed this content and to subscribe if you want to get notified when I upload future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.